What's up, YouTube? Jason Ritchie here, back with another Free Friday. Today, we're going to learn how to do some cross harp minor stuff. It's going to be a crash course in cross harp minor. We're going to be using the minor pentatonic scale. We might get into a blues scale thing. That's just one extra note. And we're only going to be using one octave. One octave. Not even one octave of the scale, one octave of the harmonica. So from holes one blow up to four draw. So an octave plus one note, right? If we count one blow as the first note. So our notes are gonna be one blow, one draw, two double bend, two draw, three half step bend, four blow, and four draw. And we'll try to work it out you know, with the with the chords, like here comes the four chords, so I'll play a four blow. This is the Otis Rush's My Love Will Never Die off of MCCD Sessions, linked below. There's that two draw, that root of one. Here comes four draw. Down to four blow. Back to two draw. All right. So now let's just try going up this partial scale. So I'll start on one draw, two double bend, two draw, three half step bend, four blow, four draw. Just right there. So I timed that so I'd land on four blow on four. Did the same thing, landing on the root of one. So check out my videos on root notes. Just improvising using those first three notes. So just the root notes. I'm gonna use a three on the way up. Three half step bend. Tongue blocking one and four. Down. So I just use that three half step bend as a passing note. Same thing going up. Now I'll just improvise up and down. Wow. 
know the root notes and, I, and you just tuned into this video and you can play this two bend notes, two double bend and three half step bend. Even if you just knew those notes, right? And you, and you play the other ones and you just improvise. Just like that. Even if you can do that, you can still be playing in E minor on an A harp. So the important part, the most important note really in this whole thing, even more than the root notes, is that three half step bend. That's the minor third. So that's the note that makes it minor. If that note is unbent, you may have something that sounds like this. It's not gonna be pretty. You hear how wrong, <laughs> how wrong that sounds? Right, it's because I'm actually playing an E major there. So that note is the most important one. All right, I'll just play that note in two draw. Just half, three half step bend in two draw, no other notes. So you can imagine if I just give myself one more note, four blow. Right, so there we go. So it, the important part is, is just to get used to using that three half step bend. So if you get used to this scale, this minor pentatonic scale in the bottom octave, right? It actually has all the notes of the whole minor pentatonic scale, octave to octave because six blow and five draw appear in the lower register as two draw and two double bend. And then you have two octaves of the one blow. <laughs> so you really have the whole scale, it's just not in order. And if you want to turn it into a blue a blue scale, all you do is add a one bend or a four bend, same note. And you get. Now you gotta remember too that that three blow is the same note as two draw. Like how and wolf will. Right, so you can do that, but you can also do like the Pat Ramsey thing. Go check out my videos on Pat. They're linked below, right? So Pat would do a lot with that three blow. Now you can get really good if you just work on these triplets. Like take the hardest parts of it. Like one of the hardest parts is two double bend, two draw, and three half step bend. It might take you a long time to get used to going. Wow. <laughs> 
but after a little while, you'll be able to speed it up. Now, right there, I'm, I'm putting in a little gloss, that, a little gliss or, or groupado that does include the three draw <laughs> major or the major third, but it's just so quick you can't even hear it. So, you don't have to really worry about that. You just want to hold that three half step bend as much as you can. The most important thing is you just want to try to stay in the scale. There's nothing wrong with other notes like two blow or three double bend. Nothing wrong with those four overblow. Any of these other notes, that's not the point. The point isn't do they sound good or do they work. The point is can I limit myself to a smaller group of notes even just in the first octave of the harmonica and still have fun. For example, when I was playing, if you notice, there's one example in there where I slipped up and I went up to that five draw. Now, right, so now there's an example of me not being in control. The harmonica played me for that fraction of a second there instead of me playing the harmonica. Why? Because I made a decision that I wasn't going to do that and then it happened anyway. So physically, muscle memory took over. A lot of people write to me and they're like, hey, Jay, I want to take lessons. And I'm like, why? <laughs> and they're like, well, because I'm stuck in a rut. So what is a rut? A rut is when we physically start doing things that we didn't mentally intend to do. It's the same thing as when I'm speaking. If I were to use the words, um, or right, or you know what I'm saying, or you know what I mean, or uh, and then next thing you know. Well, um, I don't know, you know, you know what I mean? I'm just kind of um, talking like, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying. You know, there's suddenly, there's no point. All you hear is that. Now you're not gonna notice that you're using the word um or ah uh, until your second grade teacher, Mrs. Goulette, who had the Goulette special, which were these nails that she would put into your cheeks like that. You're not gonna notice that you use the word um until somebody like Mrs. Goulette points it out. And then out of nowhere, um, you're gonna say, geez, um, wow, I'm saying um an awful lot. I, I didn't know I did that um as much as that. So you start to notice it's the same thing happens with notes. Now, one of the reasons to learn a new scale is that we get good at playing in one. So now we want to add a note or take away another. So this, again, puts us in a place where we have to be mindful of what it is we're doing. Now, the temptation is to speed up. We try to speed up. And then that's when we hit the wrong note. It's just like that game Simon that we used to play when we were kids. And music and practice can be a game. It can be fun. It's important to reframe it and look at practice as a game. That way when we, when we get mad at ourselves, we get mad at ourselves in an entertaining way. Like, oh darn, I can't go quite that fast yet. Let me practice. So just like that game, you know, Simon, you know, the certain colors would light up on the board and you'd push them and you'd have to remember the order, right? And then it would speed up and speed up and speed up. Now, eventually the point of the game is that it gets so fast that you get it wrong. Now, we didn't really get mad at Simon. I mean, maybe some kids did, but most of the time we were happy that it got so fast that we made a mistake because that meant there was more game left to play, that we could get better and better and better and better. And that's the exciting thing about music. We don't want to get to the place where we're, where, we're, where we're angry at music, right? Now, it's okay to be frustrated. It's okay 
to get frustrated. That's natural, right? That's why we take it and we put it down when it gets frustrating. If it's not getting frustrating, you're not doing something right. Don't listen to these YouTube commercials where they tell you, oh, well, you know, are you tired? Is music getting frustrating? Try this easy method. There is no easy method. The easy method is to is is instead to change the the definition of hard work in your mind into fun. That's the easy method, right? <laughs> It's not easy, especially when somebody hands you a bunch of music and they want you to learn it by Saturday. So that's when you're going to really need to call upon this stuff and reframe it as a game and make it fun. So the game here is not to play certain notes. It's not even so much what the notes are. So that's just pentatonic. So no flat fives, right? So no four draw or one draw bends. How fast can I do that? <laughs> see, I'm not used to, see, what I'm used to doing is this. See, see now, see, just because I'm used to going all the way up to the octave, see, now I have a new game. And my new game is not to go up past four draw. Now, do you notice this part where I'm slowing down a little bit? Is right around that four draw, four blow, uh, uh, three half step bend on the way down. So what I could do is instead of practicing the whole thing, I can just practice that part. So I'm going to practice it again. <sighs> so now the important part is right now in my mind, I'm not getting it right enough percentage of the time. So that means I need to slow it down. So that's going good at that tempo, so let's try it a little faster. One, two, three, four. <laughs> See, that's going better and better and better. So I have to constantly tell myself the th same things that I tell you guys, right? This whole music thing, it's really not even about music. The whole acquisition of learning, it, it could be any subject in the world. It could be carpentry or culinary arts or ballet or, or construction. Or um, I got a student that's a, a, I had a student, Mr. Tim Brindusi, who's into architecture, constantly would make wonderful architecture metaphors in our lessons. Martial arts, huge crossover between music and martial arts. It's really not about what we're doing. It's about how we're doing it and how we're looking at how we're doing it. The more we dedicate ourselves to this art, the more we realize that what we're really learning about <clears throat> is life and patience and our own mind and compassion, compassion for ourselves, compassion for others. You know, one of the things that we see a lot is when you meet some of the greatest musicians in the world, and I'm not talking about the most popular ones. I'm talking about people that have really, really spent a lot of time working on, on their craft. Some of the guys that you meet out there, like Victor Wooten or, or Jeff Coffin, the, the, the saxophone player, or any of these really, really amazing, amazingly technically talented musicians, we're tempted to think, oh, well, they, you know, they won't like me because I don't know half as much about music as them. And it's funny because 
they have that judgment area is lost for them. They no longer have that. And the reason that judgment area is lost is because it's lost for themselves. They're no longer comparing themselves against others. They're just learning music and having fun all the time. So when they see other people doing that, that's what they're excited about. It reminds me of a time period when I went to the gym. <laughs> now clearly I'm not going to the gym anymore, but I used to be, and you can see this from my videos, this skinny little scrawny kid. And I couldn't gain weight to save my life. Lots of things have changed. So I would go to the gym to learn how to put on muscle. So I went to the gym and there were all these big tough guys there and they were lifting like, you know, bench pressing like 400 pounds. And I'm over in the corner with like 75 pounds or 50, maybe I'm exaggerating, <laughs> and, the, and the bar was shaking and shaking and shaking. And one of them guys came over during that time that the bar was shaking and came over to spot me. And he was like, yeah, yeah. And all these other guys came over and they were like, yeah. And I was like thinking, why are they cheering me? And I, afterwards I was like, well, man, thanks guys. But like, man, I can't even lift 75 pounds. And they're like, that's not what it's about, man. You, you, you came, that bar was shaking. You you came here to try and grow. You're building muscle. You're breaking down muscle and building muscle. It's the same thing that we're doing with our brain, right? When we, when we get to that frustrating point, that's when the bar is shaking, right? That's what we come to do every single day. And it doesn't matter if it only, if you only put in five minutes, if you put in five minutes of shucks, I hit two blow, shucks, I hit three double bend, shucks, I can't go that fast. Let me slow down. If you put in five minutes of that bar shaking, that's better than putting in hours and hours and hours of ego boosting stuff of just what it is that you do well. I could pick up the harmonic all day and... Right? I can just play that little nonsense that I'm used to playing and perfect it here and there and get better. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's something we can do after our practice, right? When our ego's all bruised and beaten up, <laughs> maybe we take a break and watch some TV, go out and have a cigar, whatever it is, or maybe we pick up the harmonica and put on a backing track and do something that makes us feel good because we know we put in the work. So here's the work. Don't hit too blow. Don't hit three double bend. Do hit one blow, one draw, two double bend, two draw, three half spin, four, four draw, and then use them. And what, what do we know from my past lessons that three of those notes are root notes for the blues, a one, a four, and a five, that would be E. Two draw, four blow, A, and four draw, B. So that means I got these other notes that I can use just for fun. Still on one chord. Four. start putting in extra. Thank you all so much. Look, normally this is a part of the video I would say stay tuned for the credits, but I gotta make new credits for this week. Why? Okay, I'm here to tell you. Uh, Patreon, patrons, pa you guys are the ones that make these videos happen, right? They're, they're, they're free for everybody. There is no paywall for Jason Ritchie lessons, not on YouTube. You don't get better lessons over at Patreon or more complete. I 
give you whatever I can here every single Friday for free. But there are a number of y'all that are life changing, changing my life and contributing money to Patreon. Now you do get some extra videos over there, a few other lessons when I have time and a lot of vlog stuff. And we do other little events over there, Q and A's and Zoom meetings. And there's a chat section now and you can email me directly. If you're already a Patreon member, it's still only $1 a month, but if you're just joining now, it's five bucks. Why the increase? Well, it's inflation and it's because I'm so busy. It's hard to make new Patreon content and keep these videos alive every single week. And I feel so much better now that I have a little bit more motivation because it was getting tough. Patreon was actually dropping. Now it's back up to where it should. It's doing what it needs to do. And I appreciate Patreon patrons. So if you'd like to sign up for Patreon, it's $5 a month. What does that come out to? A donation of $1 a week for this for these lessons, right? Because you get four free Fridays Fridays, no matter what, right? I haven't missed one in over four years, right? Maybe the day will come when I miss one. I know y'all will understand, but it hasn't happened yet. A $5 donation, you're donating $1 for each lesson and then $1 for two extra Patreon patron videos a month. Plus you get to be part of the community over there, write each other. A lot of times you guys answer questions that other people ask before I can even answer them, right? It's a little community of dedicated harmonica players and it all just happens to be around a moon cat. That's me and I'm happy to be here. Who else do I gotta thank? I gotta thank Honer Harmonicus. I gotta thank Blue Moon Harmonicus. And oh, well, this one is from Joel Anderson, right? But Tom just replaced a read on it for me. So Blue Moon Harmonicas and Honer Harmonicas, the Lone Wolf Blues Company. Guess what? I got tons of videos. Look at all those pedals back there, those white boxes. Tons of new Lone Wolf videos coming up. And I'd like to tell you guys that we are having a discount up to $30 off on pedals. Go to the website, www.lonewolfblues.com. Check out which pedals we are discounting for the holidays. If you've been on the fence about a, a clean cat, a, 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 a reverb or, or, or a harp shield or something, this is the time, right? We, we are now taking 30, up to $30 off of certain pedals. Go to the website, check it out. Randy Landry's a good guy. There's up to a 10 year warranty and a 60 day money back guarantee, no matter what. Harp gear amplifiers, appreciate it right there. That one's backwards. It's the same one I used at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Wonderful, wonderful amplifiers. And pedal pad, pedal boards, that big thing right there. Those are two brothers of that at Topeka. They really care about what they do. They've been very good to me. They've never even given me anything for free because I've had that one since I bought it. Since I bought it, but they wrote me and they said, Jay, next one you need. You've sent us so many customers. We're gonna give you one. I haven't even needed it yet because it's still lasting. It's been all over the world, all over the world, banged up, thrown in luggage, all kinds of crazy things. Pedal pad, pedal boards. Honer Harmonicas, Blue Moon Harmonicas, Lone Wolf, Patreon, everybody. Thank you guys so very much. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll see you later. Thanks for a beautiful free Friday.